everyone, Alexa here from the blog, thedevolhomestead.com, and today I'm gonna to be talking about kale, kale flowers, and how to make a summer kale flower pasta. If you know me in real life, not necessarily through the blog, you would know that I love kale. For the past 10 or more years, I've had a kale salad every single night with dinner. I've probably only skipped that once a week, maybe. For some reason, it is just one of those foods that I not only love the taste of, but I love what it does for me. It's one of the most nutrient-dense lettuces that you could eat when compared to other salads. It is a dark, leafy green that is full of antioxidants, vitamins, and can be eaten raw or cooked. It is also an excellent source of vitamin C. Among other benefits that I have read about online, I can just tell you from personal experience that Kale makes your hair look good, it makes your skin pretty. One time I had to go somewhere for work for a week and they didn't have kale. And I got home and I was so craving kale, it was not even funny. So that just goes to show that my body was using it and needing it as part of my daily vitamins and minerals. And without it, I felt differently. I also feel like when I started eating kale back, when I was in my early 20s, I started seeing my skin being more clear and kind of having that glowing skin look. People would say, your skin is glowing, why is it glowing? And I'd always say, kale. So I'm not a researcher, I can't prove that, but I'm just pretty sure that that's what it does. So we here at our homestead have a little kale garden outside and it explodes every, every spring and summertime when it goes to seed. And when kale goes to seed, it flowers and it can get really big if you don't cut it. So with the flowers, you can actually put them in a vase and they look really pretty on your dining room table or you can cut them and prepare them for a meal like I'm going to do today. Now, if you are a gardener and you are looking for developing your kale plants for the kale leaves for salad, I have read that it is not recommended to let your kale go to seed, and this is just because whenever a plant goes to seed or flowers, all the energy is going to the seed and the flowers and not to the plant itself. And so we have just let this happen for the last couple of months, so we know that the leaves are not that great anymore. So our plan is to kind of help the plant out, uh, plant some more if we want. We have a ton of seeds. So today I'm gonna take you outside and we're gonna go and cut some of those kale flowers. I'll show you our kale jungle and then we're gonna prepare lunch. It is getting to be lunchtime here at our homestead, and so this is the time I would normally think about what we're gonna do for lunch, so I thought this was the perfect time to take you along as I cut those flowers and made a vegetable pasta. So as you can see behind me, we have an abundance of kale flowers. These plants are probably four feet high at this point. They are probably not supposed to grow this high. I've let them flower for too long now, but the good news is we're gonna have a lot of kale florets for pastas and salads, and I'm going to, of course, saute some today and then freeze the rest for later. Now, the bees love these kale flowers, so if you have a beehive, this is a great way to feed your bees. Um, we don't have a beehive, but apparently it is because there are so many bees on this plant, so hopefully they don't mind me cutting off a few flowers for our lunch today. All right, so now that we have our kale flowers cut, we are going to rinse them off in the sink like we norm normally would for any vegetable. And in this recipe, we're actually going to saute them in the cast iron. We're gonna do a butter, garlic, lemon sauce with the kale florets, and then we will add them to pasta. Top it with Parmesan cheese and salt, and it will be a great lunch. All right, so we are just going to cut these flowers up. Now the kind of the ends where the seeds are and the flowers are the best part for sauteing and for eating, but you can still eat the stem. You can eat all of this actually. You can eat it raw if you like, but it's quite hard actually, so I would prefer to saute it. So 
Some people like to steam their kale or bake the kale. If you're not someone who likes kale inherently, then baking it or steaming it is a great option. However, I have read that it can lose some of its nutritious value. So it is best if you can eat it raw. And once you start eating it, you know, it's the kind of thing that you get used to and then it's not so strange anymore. So maybe start with your regular salad. If you're trying to eat more kale lettuce, start with the regular salad that you normally eat and just add a couple kale leaves on top and then you can gradually increase your kale amount. I'm actually just going to pull these flowers off with my hands. I bet that you could also make kale tea. <laughs> kale flower tea, rather. I haven't tried that, but that would make sense. And then these little arms that are kind of popping off the main stem here are actually the seeds. So if you let this sit for long enough, it will dry up and give you kale seeds. So. If you're local to me and you want some kale seeds, come and get them because I have so many. Now keep in mind that when you saute kale, it will shrink quite a bit. So this leaf, for example, this looks like a big leaf when you're eating it raw, but when you cook it, it's gonna go down to probably a quarter of the size. And so I'm trying to get as much as I can knowing that it's going to shrink. Okay, so I have my water here boiling because I'm gonna be making a pasta. So this is for the pasta. And then I have my cast iron heating on medium heat. This is where we're gonna saute the kale. And while that's heating up, I'm going to chop up some garlic and shred some Parmesan cheese. So we're gonna add about a half a stick of butter to the cast iron. Might need more later, we'll see. Once that's sauteing a bit, you wanna add your garlic. Now what would be really good with this is some fresh herbs from the garden, and I happen to have some sage here that I cut a few weeks ago and just dried. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. You can add rosemary, thyme, whatever herbs you have, or just some dried Italian herbs you got from the store. And at this point, now that the garlic is mostly cooked, you wanna go ahead and add your kale leaves. So you just want to give them a good stir, and I think I overestimated how many kale leaves I actually had, so I'm going to add some olive oil. You can add more butter if you like, but you just want to make sure you have enough in here to get them good and sauteed. Add some salt and pepper. And I'm actually going to add just a touch of chili flakes. I think that will give it a really nice flavor, just a little bit. Now how much you want to saute this really is up to you. Like I said, you can eat these things raw, but the sauteing just kind of breaks them down a little bit, makes them easier to chew. So I like to saute them a little bit. All right, and our pasta water is boiling. I'm going to add a nice organic penne to this. It's only my husband and I, so I'm only gonna make half a bag, but obviously if you have more people, make all the pasta. This is looking so good. As you can see, it's gotten quite a bit smaller as all the leaves have been cooked. Next, I'm going to add just half a lemon. This complements the Parmesan cheese really well. Well, there you have it. That is how you make 
kale flowers into a summer pasta. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're brand new to my page, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and like on Facebook. Every week I post new farm to table recipes like this one and other homemade natural living from our homestead here in Duval. Now it is time for me to eat. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.